in India, given our family structures, given our society, you know, everybody has a say in what a woman should do, what a woman shouldn't do, uh, you know, so, and, and you see that all over in social media as well, you know, everybody has an opinion about women and what they should do. But this patriarchy is so uh, deep in our conditioning that it crops up from time to time. The reason why I say that, you know, I don't... Um, like the word glass ceiling so much because it gives you the feeling that people are holding you back. I don't think men are saying that we don't want women. Welcome to Take a Pause with me, Varun Dugirala. Today's episode is the start of a new series called The Pause Book Club, where we talk to authors about books that can really kind of help you look at your work, your life and everything in between. Today's guest is Anita Bhogle. Talk to her about her book, Equally Yet Different, and while it's focused on the woman professional, I feel this has so much value to give for every person. So before we head into my chat with her, I wanted to smash that bell icon and hit subscribe. Off to my chat with Anita Bogle. Welcome to the podcast, Anita. Super excited to have you on. A, I must tell you that um, I've loved your work, uh, your past book as well. But this one kind of spoke to me because it's something which um, I truly have believed in for the longest time um, and have propagated um, and uh, in whichever form I can. But what I really enjoyed about the book was it spoke about it from a slightly different lens from what is traditionally written about. Um, about about this specific topic, but I, I want to first ask you by saying, what was your journey like to to kind of write this book? I mean, uh, what was the process like, and and what what surprises popped up along the way? Sure. Firstly, uh, thank you for inviting me, uh, Varun. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. I've heard so much about your show. Uh, you know, it's very interesting that you should say that it resonated with you. Actually. Uh, one of the things that surprised me was that, uh, I mean, although I wrote it uh, for anyone who's, in, you know, invested in a woman's career, uh, it's been a month since the book has been out. And a very common response has been that, you know, men must read the book. Mm. And this has come from both men and women. Yeah. So I find it very, uh, you know, enduring and heartwarming that fathers want to buy it for their daughters. Uh, and there are a lot of people who say, you know, we're gifting it uh, to each other, to men and women. So that's been great. So the book uh, actually flowed out of uh, my earlier work, which is The Winning Way, which, uh, you know, uh, Harsha and I have been at for over 20 years. And somewhere uh, down the line, you know, I realized that uh, men and women are kind of looking for something different uh, and probably need something different. Uh, so we've always had this issue of, you know, why don't we have enough uh, women leaders or, uh, you know, women in influential uh, positions? Because as you know, I mean, you've been to engineering college, yeah. you know, even look at medical college, uh, B schools, everywhere you have enough women. Yeah. So the starting line looks very robust, but um, somehow, you know, the chance of a podium finish looks still looks kind of bleak. So you have a lot of examples of uh, women who are doing well. But if you look at the percentages, kind of um, uh, abysmal. Mm. Even the kind of VC money that's coming to women is abysmal. Yeah. So which is why I kind of, you know, thought, uh, let me probe a little uh, into this. Uh, and in an earlier avatar, I've been a market researcher. So, uh, you know, that hasn't left me. So I thought, you know, that I should have a kind of a researched book. Because there are a lot of books in the market, but uh, either it's one person's story, mm. and there's nothing wrong in that if you have a great story, but it's limited to three or four companies that the person would have kind of worked in. Yeah. Or then you had Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In, which I thought was the most uh, impressive in a way. I read it only when I was 50, and so it wasn't much use. But it had things that, you know, I thought, oh, I wish somebody had told me this yeah. uh, when I was younger. And this needs to be told. But somehow Lean and put the onus only on the woman. Yeah. And I thought that, you know, in uh, India, uh, given our family structures, given our society, you know, everybody has a say in what a woman should do, what a woman shouldn't do. 
uh, you know, yeah. so, and, and you see that all over in social media as well, you know, everybody has an opinion about women and what they should do. So, uh, so it kind of works a little differently here and which is why I thought, you know, let me kind of talk to people uh, who made it, who could have made it, but didn't make it. Yeah. Um, and you know, people, yeah, and experts and people like that. So I, I did in-depth uh, interviews of about ninety people. Mm. So uh, women and uh, women leaders as well, other leaders and HR people. So that's how I kind of approached the book. Luckily, it was during the pandemic, so people had a lot more time, yeah. uh, and so did I. And that's how it happened. Now, you use a term in the book called career inten- um, intentionality intentionality yeah which i found interesting because at some point the assumption is if you are working towards a career you have the intention to kind of work towards that career that's the, the general i would say assumption um Correct. but as i was reading that part i'm like okay this makes so much sense because there's always this question of a woman's commitment to her career right you never asking like a guy has um, is committed towards his career. That's that's assumed. Um, but this question yeah. keeps coming up. And I thought that's a, a great place to kind of start for someone to understand why you need to look at this from a different lens. Um, I, sure. I love to kind of like for you to dig deeper into that part. Yeah. So, um, you know, there are uh, assumptions that uh, men make, that organizations make, that when a woman is, um, you know, has a family, has young children, um, you know, her focus will be on her home, yeah. which means that it is not going to be so much on work. Yeah. So that is a very erroneous assumption for a couple of reasons. Uh, and I'm not saying that it it's not, it's entirely untrue. Uh, it is, uh, or it was true uh, a few generations ago, but now actually if you see the younger generation, they are far more uh, ambitious, mm. uh, far more at- articulate. Uh, far more confident and also aware that you know uh, they need the support and they make their own arrangements so you will find women who kind of uh, you know have the kind of support that they want uh, and are willing to make the sacrifices that they uh, uh, they need to make so you will find uh, lots of entrepreneurs for example you know so uh, who, who don't want to have children or who are postponing having children and things like that so the assumption need not be made. I think, you know, it's a, it's a very sweeping kind of an assumption. Yeah. Uh, so that is really from the organizational point of view. But if you look at women also, you know, this whole thing about career intentionality, it's a pretty complex thing, you know, starting from the kind of signaling that you get um, since your childhood. So, you know, earlier, let's say in the 70s and 80s, you would have these LIC ads which said, you know, uh, for your son's um, education and for your daughter's wedding. Yeah. Now, from there, we've moved to, let's say, a L'Oreal ad where, uh, you know, it says, because you're worth it. Mm. Yeah. So, so that kind of signaling has changed, but reality has not changed that much. Uh, so this career intentionality, you know, kind of fluctuates over the years. So it's very nice till you are married Mm. and parents are saying, go for it, do whatever. And, you know, so nobody's stopping you. But when you get married and uh, which which is later and later these Mm. days, but um, things change because, you know, that patriarchal mindset of saying that, you know, the woman's uh, first uh, priority is and her first job is to kind of um, look after the home. After that, she can manage her work. So one of the mindsets that I've talked about over there is that men work for the family. Yeah. Women work for themselves. Mm. Which means that the, it's the man's responsibility to put the food on the table because he is the primary breadwinner. Yeah. And the woman is the secondary breadwinner, no matter how much she works. Yeah. And mind you, this is in the minds of men, women and organizations. True. Okay, so that kind of goes across the board. And and so the woman has to look after the home, take care of everything else, and then kind of work. So that is the kind of mindset. You may not believe it when you are in a big city and, you know, 
uh, you have this urban mindset and you think, no, no, the women I know and the women I work with are not like that at all. But a lot of it crops up, you know, this, this patriarchy is so uh, deep in our conditioning that it crops up from time to time. So when people are around, when in-laws are around, when guests are around, you know, then you're still awkward with the man uh, doing uh, the housework. Yeah. It's, it's kind of strange because uh, women have started doing everything that men did. Yeah. And that seems to be a step up. Yeah. But when men start doing what women do did uh, traditionally, it just seemed to be a step down. <laughs> Yeah. And that is where so the true. problem is. So it's a complex mind mindset issue. Yeah. You know, when you're saying this, I, I I recall this one incident that happened to me, and and I was thinking of that exactly when you're talking. Is that um, years ago uh, when we just had our daughter? It's about I think we're close to mm-hmm. about four and a half, five years ago. Um, she's just on five. Um, and I remember there was an office party. We had an annual party. And I was, it was next to our house. So I said, okay, um, my wife Pooja is at home. And she said, you, you just go, show face and come back. I don't want to go. Um, and Pooja is the CEO of the company, right? So Pooja was actually going to, she'd come in earlier and shown face when things were happening. But so the team had seen her and she'd gone gone back. Um, and so we were, we were taking turns. I was doing the later shift and she was doing the earlier shift. There was a client who walked in late um, who said, oh, why don't you hang on for more time? And I'm like, no, we have just had a baby. going to go back home. I said, but your wife's at home, right? It's an, And I'm like, but I'm going to be taking care of the baby as well. Uh, but I saw this expression of why would you even consider that option when you can just be here? Um, almost like a matter of fact. And for me, that was like, why would you even like suggest it that way? I mean, this is a person you've met. This is a person who's the CEO of the company. It's not like you don't know who this person is. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's unconscious. It's it's You don't even realize it. And... I like that you said you might have an urban mindset, but even in the urban space, I feel it's super surface level. There's just a few people. You go a little deeper, it is still, I mean, women have to do more now if they want to have careers. Um, But in in most times, I feel men almost are, I don't know if it's ingrained saying you don't necessarily have to, I I always call it, I always said step up, but I I love the fact you said it's considered step down to actually take on more, um, which I guess is also like at some point, builds certain biases in women's heads as well. Yes, it does. And, you know, you asked me earlier, um, what surprised Mm. me? One of the things that surprised me was men have such intense FOMO now that they don't want to take paternity leave. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's paid leave given to you by your company. It would help your wife because, you know, if one parent is at home, then, you know, the child is likely to be with one parent yeah. under the supervision of one parent yeah. for a longer period of time, even if it's like three weeks or six weeks or whatever the paternity leave yeah. that is given. And yet, men don't want to do that. Now, women also have FOMO because, you know, today's jobs come with a lot of responsibility exactly. and a lot of rewards as well. And so, you know, you want to go back in the earliest possible time. And that doesn't happen because you don't have support. So it's kind of unfair, you know. So mindsets take a long time to go. So even if you have policy, that's not good enough. Yeah, it's not inclusive. Yeah, I, and I think one of the interesting parts is um, you know, you've spoken about the winning triangle, right? And 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 it's yeah. been it's ability, attitude, and passion. And you've actually added a fourth, it's literally a square for women. Saying um, the fourth is actually the choices you make. Um. I'd love for you to talk about, because you, you've taken a framework and, and kind of evolved it basis what you discovered. Um, I'd love for you to talk about that a little bit more. Sure. So the uh, winning triangle comes from the winning mm-hmm. way. And um, for a long time, we talked about it as, um, you know, a universal formula for um, success in whatever you do. If you are in any kind of a team, whether it's an orchestra or a sports team or a business team or, you know, anything then if you have a a decent amount of ability Mm. and you marry that with a good attitude, which is like hard work and discipline and, you know, being a good team player and things like that. And then you have passion on top of it, which is what is required for, you know, top performance. Then you are kind of well-placed for success. Mm. So this is uh, something that Harsha and I talked about for a long time. uh, And I think it works largely for men. Uh, and for a long time, we had largely male audiences. Mm. And so we thought, yeah, I mean, this is great. Mm. But then I had a few women asking me whether I had done any work specifically for women. 
and there seemed to be a certain reservation about uh, you know the presentation mm -hmm. and then i started talking to women a lot and then i started looking at this whole issue and then i realized that this isn't good enough because you know the choices that women make uh, affects their careers it's not like uh, you know uh, men don't get affected by uh, the the choices they make uh, but largely your personal choices impact your personal life mm -hmm. for men mm -hmm. for women the choices that you make the personal choices like you know uh, who you marry whether you marry or not whether you have children how many children how spaced out are they and do you have them early or late whatever those things are yeah. you know it affects a woman's career her professional path yeah so you will find all women saying that you know who you marry is the most important yeah. thing the most important decision that you make so the choices that you make uh, uh, impact your career and which is why i would encourage young women to have these conversations uh, with their potential spouses with their uh, in-laws um, and also know what it takes to kind of you know have a long fulfilling career what it takes to uh, get into leadership positions so that is definitely uh, something i would want uh, women to make because the choices are very important which is actually you know i the reason why i say that you know i don't um, like the word glass ceiling mm -hmm. so much because it gives you the feeling that people are holding you back yeah. i don't think men are saying that we don't want women yeah i mean even if they do that would be a minority yeah. most of the time what is happening is that because of this unconscious bias within the system mm. and because of the choices and the limiting behaviors that women are displaying that uh, displaying especially in a man's world yeah. sometimes there's nothing wrong with the uh, the behavior it's just that you are in a minority and the rules are made for the majority yeah. and so uh, this uh, you know behavior gets limiting that is what is holding women back i think an understanding of that and a communication with that would definitely help resolve the problem yeah and and i like the fact that you said that it's built as a man's world and in many times it, it, that becomes a scenario um i mean it could be yeah. and those biases actually don't sometimes stem from the smallest of things you might be in a large conference someone might just call it um band of brothers which is again like for all the women sitting in there like okay mm. one second what about me right um sometimes yeah. just like the things you put out there as as management as companies etc that kind of suddenly make women feel excluded from it just from terminology or you know it's just like how you're going to group together and, and and everything else and and that plays on um, your own mind uh, as as a woman I, i would assume because um i'm again absolutely you know small things like yeah fantasy uh, cricket mm. now for example yeah i think men would think it's a great idea to have uh, uh uh you know competition in the office and who wins this yeah. thing you know everybody forms their own teams and then you go yeah. ahead but you have enough women now and so if you're not following cricket or if you're not interested in doing something like that then it's not inclusive yeah. right so a lot of things like that you know back slapping isn't inclusive yeah. going out for a drink uh, after work is not inclusive it's not as if women don't drink but then they have to get back home they have other responsibilities as well so that's not inclusive so many many things like that people don't realize even when they when people speak mm. you know a lot of people and this is through experience and a lot shared with, with a lot of women a lot of people used to ask me when harsha and i were together and we were working so do you help your husband mm. in his work so the assumption is that the woman is always in a supporting yeah. role so she could be you know anything uh, whatever her qualifications yeah. whatever her role whatever her contribution to the work somehow the assumption or the kind of vocabulary that you use yeah affects uh, your condition so i want to take two parts of that right um one sure. is what can men say differently but the other other part also is that um how do women kind of also like who are in leadership and i know this is just a smaller percentage but i i feel that in many ways sometimes i feel like india is a little better because i've seen more women leaders in india somehow than i am seeing globally in in, in many countries hmm. um and what do women kind of do to because i feel we have masculine workspaces i think all our workspaces at foundational level at yeah. framework wise are very like masculine built it's like 
I go back to in my head the 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 literal design of how office loos are. Guys can walk in and walk out very easily, right? Uh, yeah. uh, and many office loos are not built for for women. I, I mean, it's, it's a weird example, but it's just that it like suddenly makes you feel like it's a different kind of place. Although that's changed now. So, what can men and women do differently to kind of make this not be the case? Yeah, it's interesting. You should say the loo thing because I think every woman has this loo story. Yeah. So uh, women from my generation, especially who were the first to be in whatever sector, the first to be in sales, the first to be have you know factory yeah. uh, postings and things like that, you go there and then you realize there is no uh, room for a woman, yeah. there's no a bar, you, uh, you know a loo for a woman and things like that. Now of course we've come a long way, yeah. so that issue is not there. Uh, I think the big reason is numbers. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, finally, it's a conditioning issue. If you see more women around, then automatically uh, you will start shedding those stereotypes. So that's really the first uh, solution. Mm. Uh, the second thing for men, I think, is to just realize that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of what they do is not right. Mm. Uh, and let me give you an example of something away from work. Yeah. If you listen to old Hindi music and listen to the lyrics, yeah. Yeah. you know, the role of the woman is just to please the man, yeah. to serve the man and to be his shadow. And, you know, those kind of things. I go back to old advertising, right? And if you look man, at old ads, it's like this, how you can please your man. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and women are still washing shirts and uh, the, those how white your shirt is, is giving you awards. Yeah. So that is st still there <laughs> to a certain extent. Yeah. Uh, so that's about uh, the the uh, women, but the men also. You know the kind of jokes that you crack. Uh, uh, you see them on WhatsApp groups, and grown up, educated men are still cracking those kind of you know yeah. uh, silly jokes. Yeah. Uh, that is not right. Yeah. And that is something that needs to change. The ma behen ki galis also need to go. So at a deep, deeper social level, these things need to change. Yeah. Even at uh, at work, yeah. you know, there is a lot of behavior like uh, mansplaining. Yeah. You know, it must be really widespread spread that it has a term yeah. to describe yeah. it. And every woman uh, you speak to will tell you that, you know, that is how it is. So there is one role of um, a kind of instructions given and then the men take it upon themselves to Explain. do another round for the women. Yeah. yeah. Even, even, you know, at the coaching level, like now that you need women on boards, mm. There are special courses to coach women for board positions. Yeah. You know, that gives you a feeling that men automatically qualify and walk in. Most men don't know. I've been on boards. I have no idea half yeah, the time what yeah. I'm doing. Correct. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, things like this need to change. Yeah. So the men also need to change a few things and the women also need to change a few things. And one of the things that women need to change is stop being like men. Mm. Stop aping men. I think that behavior is changing slightly. We are more comfortable in our own skin now. But uh, if you, you know, the default leadership model is male. Hmm. Like, you know, when you think of a carpenter or a driver or somebody like that, you think male, yeah. right? The first names that come to you are male. So when you think of leader or leadership style, it is male yeah. because it's loud and it's authoritative and it's uh, even arrogant. And it doesn't stick the social norm of what women are supposed to be like. so. Yeah, and it's absolutely against what uh, men want or, or even women want, uh, you know, their leaders to be like, the women leaders to be like. So in a way, it's a very confused kind of a style because it's neither authentic, uh, nor is it, um, you know, very likable because, you know, people don't like this. Uh, so one of my... Favorite uh, statements is, and tell me whether you agree, mm. I think successful men are liked by men and women. Successful women are not liked by either men or women. Um, I would largely agree with that statement. Um, I've seen this um, um, in close quarters across um, in many cases. And, you know, I've been in rooms where, you know, you'd have a, a woman leader and some across leadership, right? So, and um, the men across the table will talk to the man, even if the woman has spoken something like the statement, the presentation will be done by the woman, but but the men in the mm. room will talk to the men. 
we talked to the yeah. and at the other point you like no one said she presented and and she's on equal footing as all of us in some cases more senior than all of us but it's still that and i feel like sometimes it's also that aversion from a from a social conditioning level of you know how you in school is saying don't talk to girls or like boys sit separate girls sit separate i think it also starts from there itself right it starts from there saying it's not even you don't even know how to communicate with the other gender in a workplace um and so you automatically on the back foot saying maybe let me just not talk let me just talk to um you know the other um, you know the, the other males uh, over there but yeah. i agree with you entirely um i've seen this happen you know, way too often was, yeah five or six years ago my mother said to me and she's 89 and she said to me you know we've got it all wrong she said uh, you know we discourage our daughters from talking to guys on campus and you know things like that no for a professionally educated woman you want a professionally educated husband mm. and where else will you find that kind of a husband so the biggest pool is on campus mm. right and you are actually discouraging the girl from talking to anybody and getting her married to the same kind of a guy who she doesn't know and you know so sometimes it's this kind of conditioning this kind of bias that needs to be corrected mm. and which is why these mindsets really need to be addressed you know there's a great example in the book uh which the, the coach of the australian women's cricket team right um, matthew mort uh, talks about um yeah. you're talking to a room full of female athletes versus male athletes uh, and if you say something as a gender uh, uh, how it how each team looks at it differently based on gender um i'm not going to give this one away i'm going to let you uh, tell this because i'm sure you'll tell it better sure sure so matthew mort were used to uh, coach uh, male cricket teams mm-hmm. in australia mm-hmm. yeah and then uh, in 2018 i think he started coaching a women's team and that we- uh, team went to uh, win the t20 world cup of uh, 2020 uh, so he said this that you know when you are actually making uh, i mean the coach is standing in the room and talking to his team and when he makes a kind of very generic statement mm. uh, you know uh, not aimed at anybody in particular mm. uh, the women all take it very personally uh, and they think it's for them mm. uh but the men think that uh, you know coach is really talking to the idiot next to him because <laughs> he couldn't be wrong or he couldn't be, you know require any kind of improvement yeah. or equal yeah so that's the kind of uh thing there is a lot of conditioning like you know even Sheryl Sandberg had talked about it in her book and in many other uh, authors people have talked about it yeah. so if there is a job description let's say which mm. has like you know 10 requirements mm. uh and uh let's say a woman looks at it and says i've got seven and i don't have three then she looks at it and says you know i don't have these three so obviously i'm not qualified hmm. because i'm not scoring this 10 on 10 there yeah. is a man looks at it and says seven on 10 yeah. fabulous yeah. <laughs> i think i'm the right candidate yeah. Yeah. so things like that and it's a matter of you know this patriarchal mindset and few numbers and things like that you know then you don't have the confidence when a woman you know stands up and talks everybody is looking at her and then women's voices are also kind of shrill a little bit so uh, you know if you kind of speak loudly then you sound as if you're emotional and that's not something a man needs you know should be which means therefore that a senior woman also shouldn't be and so lots of complications like that um another example which i thought was interesting was um i think the uh, ramkumar the, the hr from icsi bank literally categorized women into three types um yeah i have some thoughts on that but i first want to understand the broader context of saying there are three types one is ambitious and not afraid the other is ambitious but don't articulate yes, and the third is ambitious up to a point um i've always worry about um these categorizations kind of generalizing and people kind of think of okay i have to be one of these boxes um but in a broader sense when you're putting this down what were your thoughts on it i think the more important thing than uh, being articulate or not hmm. because that's okay i mean you're not wearing your ambition on your sleeve all the yeah. time but i think um, uh, the more important differentiation is that the first everybody realizes that you know um it's not going to be easy mm. there are going to be challenges mm. now whether you expect uh, somebody else to look after those challenges like the organization for example yeah uh, so the first set clearly said okay this is my challenge i want to do it and i will figure out how to do it 
because if you think that you know the organization is going to do something for you somebody else is going to do for you why are these men like that why are they not empathetic mm. i think it's not somebody else's responsibility you know because the moment you start doing that you are in a kind of a victim mindset mm. yeah and when you are in a victim mindset then you it's negative right and it's a, it's a kind of a blame game and then you have excuses also not to do certain things because then you're focusing on you know uh, what you can't do yeah. so one of the interesting things that we have written about in the winning way which i think is very relevant for women mm. is don't let what you cannot do yeah. interfere with what you can do yeah. because there are a, a lot of times you know uh, there are things that you can't do and women in particular have a specific challenges but this statement is true for everybody actually i mean i had my own set of things that i could not do because i had like you know children who were growing up and a uh, husband who was traveling and you know no support in the city and things like that and but you work your way around it right yeah. and at the end of the day when you kind of look back 37 years the the body of work that you've done does look so bad so uh, yeah <laughs> so which is why you know so the second category is really looking to somebody else hmm. to kind of uh, you know find their solutions and the third set is um, you know people who just drop off just can't uh, uh, you know manage and uh, they just abort their careers and that, there's there's truth behind what ram kumar says a lot of times because you know professionally qualified women are married to you know successful men the financial situation at home doesn't really require you to work mm. not as if women work only for money yeah. but a big part of it is not there like you know that you are comfortable at home and that also becomes a habit comfortable let me not do it you don't really look at you know uh, what happened to your academic qualifications what happened to your ability to contribute to in whatever manner society uh, organization whatever so so women are also to blame for that so so three categories of women i agree that maybe they are just like buckets mm. but i think it's it's a, it's a kind of um, three mindsets that he's talked about which are probably uh, the mindsets that he has seen and he's seen a very large number of women so i i trust him no no I, I, in in oem i think it's what i feel is interesting about this categorization is when you look at uh one and two which is you know ambitious and not afraid and ambitious and don't articulate um there is a way to take um someone who can't art- articulate and at some point move them towards being able to articulate it and you know build that confidence yeah yeah, yeah. i feel the third one which is you know ambitious up to a point is almost there's a lot more work to get them to category number two itself because you're like okay this is my point i'm done moving ahead to get them on to okay i don't have to put it out there as much but i still want to be ambitious um I feel like that's such a it's a far larger hurdle to kind of climb um and i think the yeah. the ones who are at number 1 are have their own sets of problems right they're often called i mean i've i've seen this being said saying um don't sound so don't sound too cocky um no you you, you know it, it's it's those terms used the same guy could say the same things in the same room um and i'm weirdly enough always the observer and at some point kind of balance things out and don't want to again be a man spinner right? i don't want to be saying i'm mm-hmm. this whole conscious thing of saying as a guy in the room you got to fight for um you know having a woman heard i feel that at some point you just need to support whatever she's saying if it's right um but i feel that the first yeah, one as well see a lot of push uh, yeah 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 but the the, uh, the solutions are a bit different mm. so encouraging people to speak up Yeah. happens at uh, you know uh, in a lot of groups yeah. because a lot of um, you know uh, disadvantaged subgroups are there yeah 100%. so uh, yeah one of the things i've talked about because it's come from uh, you know my experience with the winning ways mm-hmm. in an ipl team for example you have like you know very young players yeah. and they are in the company of legends international yeah. legends yeah so apart from communication being an issue that you know they can't speak english well enough and things like that they also don't they are so overawed by the whole thing now such people also need to be encouraged so there's nothing wrong you know when you when you are in a minority when you are very self conscious uh, then just because you're not articulating something doesn't mean that you have nothing to say probably you're holding back 
So, um, you know, a leader who's conscious of that mm. uh, would kind of proactively reach out to these groups and encourage them to kind of speak. So, yes, one needs to articulate ambition. Also, I think women make the um, uh, mistake of assuming that mm. people around them would understand, both at home and at work. So whether it's the boss uh, needs to understand your ambition uh, also, the family needs to know how important it is for you to work and things like that, which is one of the things I've talked about that, you know, women are part or parents are part of a child's dream. Mm. And you need to make your family also part of your dream so that, you know, they have a stake in it. They're proud of you. They know yeah. that you're making an important contribution and they know what it means to you. So mm. don't give up so easily. You know, when they realize that it's important to you, they'll probably support you and share the load. Yeah. Which is which is one of the big issues there, and 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 that whole sharing of the load kind of comes in, and, and one of the core points you make, right? It's about work, work life integration. Um, yes, you, I think the word balance, and I'm so happy to see that term because I've always felt the word balance is a tricky one because when you say work life balance, you're trying to see you have to keep choosing one or the other. It almost insinuates mm. that at, at some point in the back of your head, but when you say integration, it's it's literally that, and I think especially for women, because most women are still doing the larger part. I mean, uh, pulling the larger weight uh, across home, especially. Um, and also are having to do that at work. Um, it becomes something which they can look at someone saying, how do I integrate this together? And then even working with family, working with people closest to you and at work, saying, how does that integration work in the best possible way? Also working from home. Yeah. And therefore integration becomes more important than balance. Yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, how women do it hmm. uh, and somewhere I feel this multitasking that women are credited with yeah. is is more of um, you know you don't have an option you got to learn to do it yeah. uh, rather than saying it's a skill yeah. and therefore you know you get stuck with it I think integration is a better word because uh, I don't think uh, the compartmentalization between you know uh, work and home is valid anymore Earlier, people would work nine to five, work in offices and then, you know, switch off and come home. Uh, that is not happening. And so you're expected to be on call uh, all the time. People work yeah. to, uh, you know, US timings, UK timings and things like that. So, uh, you know, your hours might be uh, odd and therefore you need to uh, do your other stuff at uh, different times. So which is why I feel that, you know, integration is a better word. Uh, but uh, yes, efficiency and time management, use of technology, I think the younger generation is doing a much better job uh, because I think uh, the, uh, they're required to do that. Their life is more complex uh, compared to, you know, what we had earlier. Um, at the end of every chapter, you have this uh, piece about saying pause and reflect. Um, we are all about taking pauses on this podcast. Um, <laughs> so if you had to kind of uh, say that, uh, if a, if a woman or a man reads your book, um, yeah. what do you feel that they need to really pause and reflect on? If I had to put a, a few points down there and saying these are the primary points you need to pause and reflect on post reading a book, what would those be? No, so so there are a set of questions with the pause button. Yeah, yeah. So you, given things like you know, uh, so for example, um, you you brought up career intentionality, yeah. uh, for example, uh, earlier. Yeah. yeah? So was there something when you look back and say, okay, I took this, this kind of a soft option, let's say earlier, do you reflect and say, could I have done something different? Hmm. Uh, you know, how could I have done it differently? Or uh, uh, at points you've talked, uh, I've talked about uh, upskilling, hmm. you know? So what are the three uh, things that are going to take me to the next level? Uh, when you become conscious of that, what are the steps that I'm taking to actually, you know, get there? Mm. So, uh, so career-wise, personality-wise, a lot of things, you know, have you done this? Yeah. How could you have done this? So that is uh, the pause button because while there are lots of inspirational stories of women who kind of have got around uh, the challenges that, you know, other women also seem to face, mm -hmm. uh, each person's circumstances, each person's uh, comfort levels, each person's personality is different. And so you need to seek your own uh, solutions. Yeah. And the solutions are not easy, which is why there is a pause button to say that, you know, 
are you also um, kind of uh, displaying these kind of behavior because one of the things that surprised me was how deep the conditioning was mm -hmm. even the most confident the most um, experienced women seem to uh, you know show uh, this kind of behavior mm -hmm. after uh, you know publishing the book uh, i had a very interesting call uh, from a, a woman who was like you know um absolutely the um the very very top uh, kind of qualified professional mm -hmm. and she was telling me about her childhood and how her parents were not only a uh, supportive but also very ambitious mm -hmm. uh so they actually said things to her like you know um don't appear for the cet try for the iit mm -hmm. uh, which is not something that most parents talk about because yeah. they say you know close to home is nice yeah. so if you have a college in your own city go there you know yeah. and uh, yeah so uh, they taught the daughters to ride uh, bicycle uh, i mean uh, bikes mm -hmm. uh, it's so very very uh, kind of progressive parents mm -hmm. um, you know lived in a government kind of a colony and so you know uh, played with boys and girls and so i said wow this is like really nice because i found a lot of parents to be supportive but not ambitious Yeah. Uh, so they would say ha engineering karna hai to karo but like close uh, by or they would yeah. say don't do finance do hr mm. <laughs> so it's like a better work life the number of times i've heard that hr needs husband. to be women <laughs> yeah it you know you're easier to find a husband and you know things like that so yeah. this uh, uh, a woman said you know uh, i mean i was not i was surprised when she the next question she asked was and still i ticked all those be, uh, you know limiting behaviors hmm. despite having this kind of background when i was just wow. thinking that you know wow i wish all parents were like that hmm. he said but i ticked all the boxes so repeatedly you find that you know that this conditioning is so deep that you know every woman seems to uh, kind of relate to that no right. it's super Surprising. interesting and the, yeah. and this so much more dig into but i i know that's in the book and i don't want at some point to get the entire book out there in one podcast yeah. um and so um I, i know that i deeply enjoyed it. i know i have i'm i'm i've passed it along to um a f one at least i'm i'm going to do this passing to uh pooja because i know she's going to enjoy reading it as well um and i've telling everybody who's kind of watching and listening to this to really pick it up because it gives you perspective and it doesn't give you perspective from a sense of this is just a story but really like clear cut insights and what you can kind of do as as actionable pieces um so uh, thank you for a writing the book and uh, thank you for coming on this podcast um it, it's been it's been super interesting talking to you and i think there's a ton this for people book, to pick it up it's sure this book it's called equally and different career catalysts for the professional woman and uh, i hope uh, many of your viewers would watch it uh, read it and uh, make the voice louder you know so that we we need a louder voice to make this world fairer and more gender just so i hope that happens i agree entirely yeah thank, thank you, you so much, much. Thank thanks you. thanks for having me varun i hope you enjoyed my conversation with anita bogle um uh, ton of insights there not just for women but for men as well um if you have more authors and books that you want to suggest for us to kind of talk about then drop it in the comments and i'll see you guys in the next one But before I go make sure you hit subscribe and smash that bell icon